Production of the J.R. Eldridge Show was made possible with financial support from Turner & Turner, Attorneys at Law. Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments. The accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning & Plyler, PLLC. Welch Funeral Home. Roger Wingfield of State Farm Insurance. Southern Bank Corp. Southwest Sporting Goods. Taylor King and Associates. Mary and Martha's Florist and Gifts. Price and Company. Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker. Eccles, Thompson and Kneebone and Farm Bureau Insurance of Clark County. This is the J.R. Eldridge Show with the head coach of the Arkadelphia Badgers. Joining Coach Eldridge today is your host, Caleb Byrne. Welcome back to another week of the J.R. Eldridge Show. I'm your host, Caleb Bird. We're joined, as always, by Coach Eldridge. And Coach, we're going to talk this week about a big game that happened last Friday night. And for the second week in a row, your Badgers beat a higher class opponent, a quality opponent, and this time by a final score of 33-20. Yeah, we're really excited about the victory. Uh, just so proud of our coaching staff and our players. Um, you know, I feel like our, our players really did a great job of, of really starting fast. We had kind of a lull in the second quarter. Uh, but then after halftime, felt like our players really just – came out, wanted it more, uh, played the hardest. They were the hardest playing football team on the field uh, at Benton um, last Friday night. And then they also executed better in the, in the second half. And just so, so pleased with uh, this start up to this point. We do know that, uh, that a football season is an entire body of work. Uh, so as much as we're excited about this, this game and this victory and, and how our players played and how our coaches coached, uh, you know, we've got to continue to try to play our best football each new week, uh, and we'll continue to try to do that. And Coach, coming into the game, uh, it was classed as the game of the week for the Class 4 race. There was a lot of media attention around the state looking at your team this past week. How did you prepare your team for this game in the midst of all of that attention, in the midst of um, them knowing this was a huge game? Yeah, well, I think uh, – you know, as far as our team goes, we don't we don't talk about about that just a ton. You know, uh, we know that that every game that we play is going to be a big game. Uh, you know, and and we've got to make sure whether whether it's a quote unquote big game uh, as far as other people's perspective, uh, we've got to know that it's the game on our schedule and it, it is the biggest game uh, this week. Uh, it doesn't matter who we're playing. Um, and that's kind of the mentality that we want to have every week. One of our, uh, our game maxim is to prepare for each the same. So we wanted to prepare for Benton the same way we prepared for Sylvan Hills. Uh, we want to prepare for Wynn the same way we prepared for Benton. Uh, and just try to really, really get down the details that we've got to know uh, within our practices throughout the week so we can be at our best on Friday night. I feel like our players did a good job of that. I feel like our coaches did an excellent job of preparing them. Uh, and we look forward to another week. Yeah, Coach, the team certainly seemed well prepared to go into the game Friday. So let's take a look at the highlights we have from last week's game. If you'll hang with us, the first few highlights are a little bit dark, uh, but the light's going to pick up, so don't adjust on your monitor. Uh, to start the game off, Arkadelphia receives the opening kickoff. Uh, nice return here up to around the 30-yard line. And then the first drive of the game is going to be like, uh, like, a, like clockwork for the Badgers, just constantly moving the ball up the field. It really was. I, I was so proud of our offense. Our offense came out and really just dominated the line of scrimmage. Uh, we were able to uh, stay in front of the chains, uh, convert on third downs, and then just, just be able to move the, move the ball right down the field. So really proud of our offense and the way they started the game out right here. And there was a catch from Ricky Rogers Jr., the first catch on offense of his career, mainly a defensive lineman. Yeah, he's been doing a great job for us at the dog position. He and Jay Sean Davis, you can see Jay Sean uh, really blocking, uh, blocking extremely hard. He did that all night. Both Ricky and Jay Sean block well and catch the ball well. There was a great touchdown run from uh, Kyron Harrison. Followed his blockers, really. That's all he had to do on the play. 
got in the end zone for his seventh of the season. Yeah, Kyron's been running the ball really, really well for us. We continue to uh, just uh, feed him. He's been doing a great job for us, and we look forward to more from him. So defense comes out on the field now at the 7-0 lead, and uh, Benton can't get anything going in the run game up the middle. Yeah, it felt like our defense, again, you can see we've got all 11 players at the ball. Uh, that says something about a defense when everybody's running to the ball. Uh, so really good start by both our offense and our defense. A lot of success here early um, in the run game, running off tackle, power running, um, moving the ball up field pretty well. Uh, penalty, some, some lost yardage kind of derails the drive here, the second drive. Yeah, and we, you know, that's one of the things that Coach Moreland talked about in our synopsis on uh, Sunday uh, for the entire team is just offensively, we've got to stay ahead of the chains, not allow penalties or any mistakes to, to keep us behind the chains. We want to stay on course. Um, on our drives. Yeah, but any time Arkadelphia had trouble um, or, or had, was forced to punt the ball, Cannon Turner did a great job. Excellent job by Cannon punting the football. He had 56, He was a, had a 56-yard net average. Uh, he had one punt for 69 yards. Kyler Pfeiffer also did an excellent job of covering down and, and really downing those punts in, uh, deep in Benton's territory. Yes, he did, and so uh, another defensive stop here from Benton. A chance for a long throw here. It's intercepted. It, what what happened in that play? Well, just ball was a little bit underthrown. Uh, the Benton defender made a good uh, made a good play on the ball. We've got to, uh, you know, really we want to fight for that ball. We got to get uh, Kyler going up for that ball and trying to get it at the highest point. But still, ball was underthrown. Um, and then the Benton defender made a good play on the ball. Was it the correct read to throw the ball to the man? Uh, yeah, it's a, it was a predetermined play. We were going to try to hit, uh, hit Kyler over the top. But like I said, it was just a, a little bit underthrown, so it, it kept us from, uh, from having a good drive right there. So coming off the interception, Benton drives down. Um, nice touchdown throw and catch there on the out route, and it's 7-7 seven, seven here in the first quarter. Yeah, so uh, Benton fights back. We knew they would, and we talked about that all week. Uh, got another good punt from Cannon, um, you know, and then and then also we just, you know, we, we just we had to. Uh, uh, they did some things offensively that hurt us a little bit. Uh, we've got to be in better spots right there on their touchdown drive. Yeah, nice sack right here from Jason Campbell. In the radio booth, he was our defensive player of the game. He had a great, did a great job on the defensive line. Yeah, he was our defensive player of the game as well. Did an excellent job. A lot of pressure on the quarterback. Uh, Jason ended up with two sacks and a couple of TFLs and a big hit. Uh, you know, Ricky Rogers had two sacks as well. Thought our defensive line did an excellent job of getting pressure on the quarterback uh, when they were trying to throw the football. Yeah, both line, both sides of the line played really well, defense and offense, and that's hard to do. When you go up against a higher class opponent, the line usually is where you see the most disparity in size and experience, but Arkadelphia handled the line very well from Benton. Yeah, I thought, uh, yeah, I thought that, that's exactly right. You know, on this drive right here, had some really good, uh, good open field tackles right there to um, just really did an excellent job, especially out at corner. I think it was uh, Bledsoe made a great play out there. Um, so really pleased with our secondary and their progress. You know, that was one of the, one of the places where we lost several guys. Um, you know, Kalen Jones, Keelan Nelson, uh, Lucas Witherspoon, and, and uh, Trey Bledsoe have done a really good job of, of kind of stepping up and making some plays back there. There was a missed tackle in the open field right there, led to a first down. Um, that was a fourth down try from Benton. And so Benton keeps her drive alive here in the red zone. Here's a uh, backwards pass to Gavin Wells, and he just uh, defense got cut, got bit there on the trick play. Really did. We've got to be aware of that. Uh, you know, especially when they throw the ball backwards, uh, we've got to know that something something's coming right there, um, and we've got to stay on in the secondary. Cole Turner, you saw him. He he had an opportunity. Really kind of pressured that throw. Uh, so we've got to cover the, cover the receivers up downfield, even though it is a trick. Uh, we've got to be able to, uh, to stay on right there. Did you see that trick play in any film you watched? Did you know that was coming? You know, uh, Benton has, has done things like that in the past, but uh, we knew that we would, have, you know, that if they got in a bind, uh, that we would, we would experience some things like that uh, from their offense. 
Um, but we've just got to be better on the back end there. A play ago, if you want to rewind and watch it, there was an amazing open field block from Kyron Harrison. Just absolutely pancaked a cornerback in the open field. I've really been proud of our uh, perimeter blocking, uh, our running backs, our dogs, and our uh, slots and, and outside receivers as well. I mean, you can see Kyler Pfeiffer right there working downfield, uh, continues to take the Benton defender uh, downfield and puts him on his back. Uh, so that's a huge block right there. Keeps our drive alive and keeps them from being able to tackle our runner. Uh, so our perimeter blocking, Coach Moreland has done a great job with those receivers, getting them better at per perimeter blocking. So throughout the second quarter into the first quarter, Arkadelphia had trouble running the football, especially down the middle. Switch the formation there to a stack formation, two receivers stacked on either side. Um, Why did you, you make that change there? Well, Coach Moreland, I think he saw something in our halftime adjustments. You know, uh, I'm going in there at halftime trying to motivate our players and talk to them about, about uh, how, uh, how we've got to put on more steam. We've got we to be better. Uh, we've got to see it in their eyes and their body demeanor and everything that we do. Uh, we've just got to be better in the second half. Uh, while the other, while our assistant coaches are uh, are searching that film out to see if we can get an advantage defensively, offensively, and on special teams, uh, Coach Mullen saw something that he could get out of that that sugar formation that we use, uh, and we were able to do that. So into the second half now, Benton scores the first drive of the second half, and then Jason Campbell really made what what had the potential to be a really big play in blocking the extra point there. 20 to 13 is the score. Uh, now in the third quarter, Arkadelphia driving with the football. But that extra point block could have, could have been really crucial. Yeah, it was huge uh, for us, really. Logan Becker, Jason Campbell, both those guys coming off the edge, very, very fast and long. Uh, so we feel like we've got an opportunity to block any PAT or field goal that, that somebody tries. Uh, Buster Thomas right there, huge run from the from our running back spot right there. Does a great job uh, following his blockers, making a cut and getting in the box. He was our offensive player of the, of the week uh, this week. He just did an excellent job, uh, you know, catching the ball, running the football. Uh, just, just really good performance by Buster. Yeah, missed on the two point conversion. Down by one point, but that hit right there from Ethan Savage was a huge hit. Forced a fumble, returned by Ricky Rogers, a little bit of a Distance, you can't see it on the video, but that was a huge play from Ethan Savage. Really was, game-changing play. Uh, Ethan's done a great job playing that linebacker spot. Uh, he's had several big hits, just playing really, really hard right there. Um, and that, that really gave us an advantage, putting that quarterback out, uh, getting the ball back as well. Uh, so really proud of the way that, that we got the ball back, we created a break, and then offensively we were able to, uh, to make Benton pay for their mistake. Yeah, you, you get the turnover, you score there with Cannon Turner run up the middle. Um, so now Arkadelphia has a lead, 25-20, and the defense is back, and Ricky Rogers with a big tackle there, now on the backup quarterback in Gavin Wells. Yes, yeah, great job again. Our defensive line just getting great pressure, uh, continuing to hurry the, hurry the quarterback, and then right there, great job in the back end of covering up the receivers. Arkadelphia's offense now is, is just rolling. After that slump in the second quarter, really, it looks like you've really spread out Benton's defense. They were kind of bunched up in the second quarter, and now you've spread them out with your formations. Yes, we were able to do that, uh, and that helps. You know, when you can inside out or outside in, um, you know, and put their defense in the bind, it really helps us out. You see Buster Thomas again, huge run right there, great perimeter blocking, and. Uh, really, Buster's got re really good acceleration on the football field, uh, so excellent job there. Yeah, that was an excellent touchdown run. Um, whenever Buster cut the ball upfield, he had two players with an easy angle on him to tackle him, and Buster just beat him in a foot race. So, uh, Yeah, he's very, very explosive, uh, and, and that's huge for us. Yeah, so defense coming out now. It's a 33-20 to 20 lead Badgers hold here, still uh, now into the fourth quarter. Um, but the, the offense isn't able to get too much going, but able to take a little bit of time off the clock, but the defense really does well to close out the game. Yeah, we were really close to, uh, to converting on that third down right there. Uh, Cannon overthrew the ball just a little bit, uh, just uh, so close to that conversion. But again, uh, Cannon makes up for it right there with the deep punt. Uh, Kyler Pfeiffer covering down, down in that ball within the 10 right there, within the 20. Uh, so. 
good job uh, right there to uh, pick up on special teams um, when we couldn't get a, get a uh, first down right there. After Benton's quarterback goes down injured, they've put in now um, who was their star wide receiver is now playing quarterback in the fourth quarter. Not as good at throwing the football, but he's really explosive in the run game. He really is. He's tough to tackle, very, very slippery, plays extremely hard, got a lot of grit about him. Uh, you know, so he, he did a good job coming in and, uh, and trying to fill in right there. Uh, yeah. I thought this was a poor, poor call. I thought both pass interference calls were very, very poor. Uh, felt like we were in great position right there. That man's hands went up, so did Bledsoe's. Uh, just thought it was well played defensively and a poor call. And right here, Bledsoe just got called for pass interference, comes up with a huge interception inside the five yard line. Yeah, really, uh, again, just, uh, just another opportunity right there to, to put the game away. We're able, to, uh, we're able to create another turnover. Our defense has done a great job up to this point of creating those turnovers in both of our games and uh, just look forward to more, more out of them. And that, you know, it says something about our coaching staff our play and our players. They're doing what they're coached to do. They're in the right spots. They're making plays. Um, and then, uh, you know, it just it says something about their ability to give energy, effort, and focus in practice. Yeah, and, and Coach, the mental fortitude it took on the interception, um, I was thinking about it after the play, that whenever you get called for a pass interference call like that, my first instinct, and, and I'm not a football player anymore, but it would just be to turn to the referee and yell at him, berate him, and just be angry. But he, you know, dug in, made a big play to win the game for the Badgers. Yeah, and, and really, I think Coach Chandler's done a great job with our DBs this year uh, as far as getting that kind of that next play mentality uh, to where, I mean, look, that's going to happen sometimes. we got to move on to the next play. Don't let the previous play affect our next play. Right, and so kneeling out the, the ball to win the game, 33-20, to 20, the final score there. Um, overall, great performance from the team. A few things I want to hit on, though. Um, first off, were some really big defensive plays from guys that we don't see, um, haven't seen in the past making big plays. You know, in the past, our Kelpie defense has been dominated by, say, Campbell, Rogers, Cannon Turner, Kyron Harrison making big plays on defense. But last week, this week, you saw Ethan Savage make a few big tackles that forced fumble, and then Trey Bledsoe make some really nice plays in the secondary. It really did. You know, Savage has really just done a great job of being able to, uh, you know, Kyron's carrying a lot of load. Uh, offensively. He's, he's running the ball a lot. I think he had 15 carries uh, in the first game. He's now got, uh, I think he had 13 or 15 this past game. So he's carrying the ball a lot and uh, Ethan has just done a great job of being ready to perform at a high level when he gets in there. Uh, so really proud of the way he's, he's been playing. Trey Bledsoe, man, he's uh, you know, as far as his stature goes, he's kind of short. It's, it's tough, you know, when a, when a an offensive coach is out there looking, uh, you know, who do they want to pick on in the secondary because of his, his height, uh, they may want to pick on him, but, but based on the way he's played in these games, you know, uh, he's putting film out there that says, you know, you're not going to pick on me. And he kind of plays that way. Uh, and I've really been proud of the way that he's stepped up and grown up. And that's, that's something that I feel like uh, we've been trying to do with our entire program is, you know, everybody matters in our football program. Uh, you know, one guy might get more credit for something that they do, but everybody's important and everybody has a role to fulfill on our football team. Uh, and, you know, I think our guys have just developed that mentality over the years and they're able to come out, execute a role uh, and, and be a great teammate and great team player. So really proud of the, uh, really the way that Coach Kaiser has coached team defense on our defense and uh, the unselfishness offensively. You can even see it offensively where we've got a lot of really good perimeter blocking going on. Right, and um, you just mentioned that perimeter blocking, inside blocking as well from the offensive line. Um, those guys, if I were to pick a, if I could pick five offensive players of the game, I'd pick the offensive line because you look at, Arkadelphia had five rushing touchdowns. All five of those touchdowns didn't really require an amazing individual performance from the running back. The one from Buster where he ran 41 yards on the sideline, a lot of speed there, but all of them, offensive line did a great job blocking. It really did, and I, I can't say enough about, uh, about our offensive line. You know, uh, London Cotton, Lorenzo Lawson, Jaden Quarles, uh, Cab Batson, uh, you know, uh, Matthew Parnham, 
Um, you know, you just you go down the list, and those are seniors that, that got a, a lot of experience last year, uh, 15 games worth, and then they come back and they just continue uh, to get better. Uh, you know, I felt like Cotton really dominated uh, as an offensive lineman on, on Friday night. He was actually our, our Badger Spirit Award winner. Uh, who has been going to kind of the, the offensive or defensive lineman who really stood out. Um, you know, we also might give that to a practice player of the week, but felt like Cotton just really dominated at, at that uh, tackle spot Friday night. Uh, and really all of them did a great job. Yeah, Coach. And um, the last player on the offensive side of the ball I want to talk about is Buster. Uh, Buster's a guy we've been seeing flashes of him for all of last year as a sophomore. I saw flashes, maybe a few flashes last week against – Sylvan Hills, but this could have been his coming out party as a star football player in the 4A because he put in an amazing performance on Friday night. He really did, and, and we know that Buster has that in him, you know, and, and uh, last year he was hurt for the first three games, uh, kind of got his, got his groove back in the fourth game, uh, made a lot of really good plays, and I, I agree with you. I mean, I think that uh, that Buster is just an explosive athlete, an explosive player. He can do so many things. Uh, he can play the slot and catch balls uh, and beat people vertically. Uh, he can run the football either from the backfield or from our slot position. He can also throw the football from the quarterback position, you know, so he's so versatile. Uh, he's got a, a lot of, uh, of uh, agility, really quick. Uh, and then he's got that, that explosive acceleration that you saw on tape um, while we're doing this show. So, um, you know, and one of the things about Buster, too, is he's such an unselfish person. He's such a great young man. Uh, yes, sir, no, sir, all the time. Makes good grades. You know, and, and a lot of times those two things go, go together. Uh, you know, so just extremely proud of the game that, that he played. Uh, he can also even play corner for us if we need him. Uh, but just, just really proud of, of the football player he's become, and, and hopefully it is his coming, coming out party, and we continue to see those things. Right, and so I'm um, going to mention one last time, final score, 33-20, Arkadelphia over Bitten. Going to look ahead now at next week. Arkadelphia is going to go up against Wynn, and Wynn beat a 6A team in Marion last week, 27-21. That was the game of the week in uh, 5A, and so Wynn – had a big win. They're a good team. They uh, have a lot of history down there. But could you give us a preview? What is Win going to look like this season? Yeah, Win is. Uh, they're always very athletic, uh, you know, uh, and they do have a lot of tradition. They're, they've got good football players. They've got good coaches. Uh, they fly around defensively, offensively. They run a tough offense to stop. Um, you know, and they and they're trying to put you in a bind, put your defense in a bind, and make you play discipline. Uh, defensive football and that's one of the things that we've really got to work at in practice uh, you know and they've got a lot of speed I mean uh, traditionally they're very very fast um, so you know we're looking forward to the challenge of playing win um, and uh, can't wait for a, a great week of practice yeah coach and you mentioned win runs a different offense they run um, not sure exactly what kind of option offense but an option offense so what is going against that kind of offense and the preparation it's going to take this week to go against that kind of offense? How does that prepare you for later in the season when you face Boxite, when you face Harmony Grove, who also run that kind of offense? Well, I think it does. It, it prepares you uh, to, to really hone in on being a disciplined defensive football player. Each, each player on our defense is going to have a responsibility, an assignment, uh, not that that's any different from each week, but when you, when you play a spread football team uh, where, you know, uh, the passing game might be a, a deal, you can run a zone coverage if you want to, uh, whereas if one guy makes a, makes a mistake versus this triple option offense uh, and we're out of position uh, defensively, we're going to pay for it. Uh, so... You know, I think whether you're going against the spread or even against a triple option offense like we're going against, going against that triple option and having to make sure that you, that you, um, that you tackle your responsibility, you do your job on every single play, that helps you in the future to continue to be disciplined and really focused on your responsibility as a defensive football player. Mm -hmm. So even though 
you might not face a lot of teams run this offense, but playing when playing these upper classification teams, these bigger schools, that helps the team gain uh, some mental toughness, mental fortitude for later in the season. Well, we I, I certainly hope you're right. You know, I, I hope that is the case for us. I feel like uh, again, the, the football season is an entire body of work, and uh, and we've got to we've got to be able to adapt to whatever's happening each week within our football program. Um, there's so many factors that so many people don't take into account, whether that be injuries or, uh, you know, something happening with a young man or what, whatever the case might be. We've got to be able to, to, to adapt there, uh, you know. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, the energy and the effort and the focus, those are the three things that we're looking for out of each practice for our young men. And I think that translates, it, hopefully it'll translate later on in life for them. You know, when you go to work, uh, you got to have energy. You've got to be somebody who sets a standard for uh, for whatever you're doing. Uh, you've got to you got to put forth the effort, and then you got to be focused at work and not be distracted by so many other things. And we're trying to teach that from the bottom up. Uh, you know, with our seventh grade all the way to our twelfth grade. Right. And so, if you have to pick one thing for Friday night, one key to victory, what one thing does your team have to do to win the game? Well, I think we've got to we've got to have great ball security. We've got to keep the ball uh, offensively uh, in our hands. You know, uh, if we give the ball back to them and we lose out on possessions of the football uh, and opportunities to score, you know, uh, they they might try to run the clock, uh, and we've got to be able to get off the field. Uh, on third downs, you know, and I know I'm getting to another key to victory, but uh, but those kind of go together. Uh, whereas, you know, we've got to secure the ball and we've got to get off the field on third down. Last year versus when we were really, really good on first and second down, and on third down they were able to they were able to convert a lot on third down. Uh, that kept our defense out on the field and it kept our offense from being on the field. So we've got to be great at ball security, uh, and being able to get win off the field on third down. All right, coach, and last point. This is the home opener for the Badgers. Badgers had started the season two games on the road and now coming back home, Badger Stadium Thursday night. How big of a deal is that? Oh, it's huge. I mean, I, you know, it's uh, having two road games kind of be going to kind of be awkward being at home, uh, but we're really excited about uh, being at home. We feel like we've got one of the best atmospheres in the state. And look, really, uh, I felt like the way our crowd traveled uh, I felt like we beat Benton with our crowd. I felt like we beat Sylvan Hills with our crowd. So I'm just so thankful, and our players are so thankful about a, um, you know, a community that really supports their football team, supports their band, uh, supports all of our young people in our community. Um, and I feel like uh, this Thursday night, it, it is going to be awkward because it's on a Thursday night, not a Friday night. Uh, but we're looking forward to it and can't wait to, to be in front of our home crowd. Yeah, Coach. So everyone out there in the community watching this show Thursday night, come out to Badger Stadium. It's going to be a great atmosphere against a great team and win, and the Badgers have a chance to go 3-0 and into the conference season. So we hope to see you there Thursday night. See you right back here next week for another episode of the J.R. Eldridge Show. We'll see you then. Sponsors of the J.R. Eldridge Show include Southwest Sporting Goods, Taylor King and Associates, Mary and Martha's Florist and Gifts, Price and Company, Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker, Eccles, Thompson and Nebo, Farm Bureau Insurance of Clark County, Turner and Turner, Attorneys at Law, Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments. The accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning and Plyler. Welch Funeral Home. Roger Wingfield of State Farm Insurance. And Southern Bank Corp. The J.R. Eldridge Show is produced each week by the Rogers Department of Communication at Washita Baptist University.